It's one of the most fun things for any sports fan to do, and that's rank the best. The best ever in the history of a team or a franchise. The best at a position, current or ever. The best in the history of a league. The best at a sport. The best athlete. The greatest of all time at any of those things or just in general. It's annoying sometimes, too, though, for people like me who feel like they know the history of of sports and they know how these lists should properly be ranked. But nevertheless, it's mostly fun. And that's what West Virginia basketball is trying to do right now. WVU basketball is trying to put together their Mount Rushmore. Their Mount Rushmore of men's basketball in the history of the program. So the WVU men's program Who are the four best? Or who are the four most impactful and most important figures? They're just going to players. So who are those four players that you would want on a hypothetical WVU basketball Mount Rushmore? And we're not talking about the women's program right now. We're not talking about Meg Bolger and Liz Rapella and even Coach Carey, if you want to throw beyond a player on there. It's just the men's program. And this men's program has been a lot more successful than people may give it credit. And I'm not talking recent. I'm talking historically. Jerry West played there. Jerry West led the program to a Final Four. Jerry West then became one of the greatest NBA players of all time. Maybe he's dipped in ranking now from where he was when he was playing, the difference of the league and the fact that he lost so many of those NBA Finals. Regardless, he played for the Lakers. He was the best player in the Lakers for all those years. He led the Lakers to all those NBA Finals. They did lose a lot, but they lost to the Celtics with all those legendary teams. He did win a championship. He's a former MVP. He won an MVP in the NBA Finals, even in a losing effort. He is the current low go unless he gives that up to Kobe Bryant the late Kobe Bryant and then became one of the greatest builders and executives in basketball history building the Showtime Lakers building the Shaq and Kobe Lakers building the Golden State Wars recently with Steph and Clay and wasn't there the whole time of course but built that early on give him credit there built even a Memphis Grizzlies three or four year stress that led to some grind city playoff appearances built the current Clippers that now with Kawhi Leonard and company are clearly a juggernaut in the league. So one of the greatest basketball figures in history is a web, is a West Virginia WVU product and had success there, leading the team to a Final Four. There's Hot Rod Hudley. We know what he did as a basketball player. He's again another WVU product. Had success as a pro, not nearly as much as Jerry West, but then had success and is a Hall of Famer as a broadcaster. He's in the Utah Jazz Hall of Fame for that. A major figure in the history of basketball. And that's many years ago. That's a half century ago when they played at WVU. There's been success recently in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Bob Huggins as coach. 800 plus wins, probably going to retire with 1,000. The Final Fours, two for him, one for WVU with WVU. The Sweet 16s, the Elite Eights, the Big East Championship, maybe Big 12 Championship coming. NC Tournament pin appearances, this WVU team right now is pretty damn good and above expectations really without a superstar. One of the greatest coaches in the history of the sport who will be a Hall of Famer is coaching at WVU and is a former WVU product. And then there's been the Deshaun Butlers, the Kevin Pitsnoggles, Javon Carters having success at WVU and then a little bit beyond. And two of those three in the NBA. So there's been success for the program. There has. There's almost underrated success. The two Final Fours, the Sweet Sixteens, the Elite Eights, all those NCAA tournament appearances what they did in the Big East when it was a gauntlet of a conference with all those teams that were caliber and tournament quality tournament quality teams with 16 teams in that conference at one point and probably 14 that were really, really good. And then now even in the Big 12. So there's a lot to pick from, okay? There's a lot to pick from for a Mount Rushmore of WVU basketball for the history of the program. And some of those guys I mentioned are going to have to be there. In fact, 
four of those guys I mentioned are going to be deserving of being there. But unfortunately, the way the fans are doing this, they're not picking the right four guys. Or at least not for my money. It's pretty clear that Jerry West is there. That Jerry West deserves to clearly, clearly be a member of any WVU list. Any all-time list for WVU has to include the logo. Has to include one of the greatest figures in pro basketball history, in NBA history, and even in college basketball history, in basketball history. Spanning the country from WVU all the way to L.A. So Jerry West, of course, would be on the Mount Rushmore. That's one. Hot Rod Hudley is another. Now, for the younger fan, of course, and I'm one of you, he's more known as a broadcaster. He's more known for what he did with Utah in the NBA as somebody on the air. More than a player. Okay? But that doesn't mean there wasn't success there as a player. That doesn't mean Hot Rod Hudley was not a great player when it of you. That does not mean he doesn't deserve to be on this list. Okay? In fact, he does. And he was a consensus All-American like Jerry West. Hot Rod Hudley is also there. In fact, he, here, here, I'll, I'll give you mine. There you go. Jerry West, obviously there, one of the greatest basketball figures of all time, led WVU to a Final Four. We know the NBA success, the logo, and then the executive success of the NBA that's still going. Hot Rod Hudley, a great player, not Jerry West, but a great player at WVU because this is All-American. Great player, briefly pro, two-time NBA All-Star, even though his career was eventually cut short, also a former Laker. Only able to be on the Lakers for six years, though, with an injury. And then the all-time success as a broadcaster, as a member of the broadcast crew with the Utah Jazz in particular. And a Hall of Famer there. He has to be there. So we agree Jerry West and Hot Rod Hudley, right? I think everybody has that. I think we all agree. I then throw on Kevin Pitsnoggle. And I then throw on Deshaun Butler. And there's my reasoning. I gave a little reasoning there in the tweet, which I'll throw back up there later. But I also get that that's not where many of you are. Looking at the results, everybody has Jerry West. They're mostly everybody has Hot Rod Hudley. It's not a name, it's a Jerry West, but mostly everybody has Hot Rod Hudley. You just know the name. And the broadcast career, I think, is part of it as long, because he did play some and did have success as a player. And I would love to throw Bob Huggins on this list, but we can't. He's not, a, he's not an option. He does have the W product lineage to him. Okay, It's not like he just woke up one morning and became a coach. He did play. He did have a great career as a head coach with Cincinnati. Even that one year in Kansas State was quality, building that program up. And then, of course, he's doing, as head coach for the Mountaineers, the last 10-plus years, the Final Four, the... Sweet 16, the NCAA tournament appearances, the Big 12 championship game appearances, the Big East championship. And for me, Big, Big Bob Huggins, Big Bob Huggins, I guess I'll call him, Bob Huggins deserves to be there. In terms of figures for the history of the basketball program, Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, and Bob Huggins might be those three guys. They might be the top three guys for the success for what they did there, how synonymous they are there with the program as well as the area, as well as the state of West Virginia. Bob Huggins definitely deserves to be there. But he's not an option. He's not there. Can't pick Bob Huggins. So I wanted to get that out there. If I could have my way, and this could just be basketball figures, Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, and Bob Huggins are my top three. And Huggins would absolutely be there. Absolutely. John Beeline can maybe argue, and he's had more success with Michigan, so he'll probably be in their Hall of Fame. He did win an NIT with West Virginia and built that program up for Huggins to then take it over and get some of his recruits to that Final Four in 2010. 
But Huggins would be there. He's the Hall of Fame coach in all of college basketball. He did now a lot of his work at West Virginia, even though a lot of Cincinnati as well. Enough wins are at WVU that he would be there. Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, and Bob Huggins would be there. But Bob Huggins, again, isn't an option. So now we're back to Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, and because I can't have Huggins, Kevin Pissnagel and Deshaun Butler. And most of you are saying Deshaun Butler. We're seeing a lot of Deshaun Butler. He was the best player on the 2010 Final Four team, the recent modern Final Four team. It's still in your memory. He was the best player on that team. He was the star player on that team. There's been pro success. There's been an NBA opportunity, even though not tons of success. There's even been some voting John Carter, and I'm not going to put him there ahead of Deshaun Butler because, again, this is a Mount Rushmore of what you did at WVU, not beyond. This is why the whole argument with Pat White, and I did a past show on this, Pat White in the Hall of Fame, and and whether you should retire his jersey. And I get that maybe he deserves all those things, but it's so rare for the program history. But if he does deserve those things, it would be about what he did at West Virginia. It shouldn't be, he shouldn't be held back because he didn't have much of an NFL career. It's about what you did in college for the individual college Hall of Fame or the individual retiring of your jersey or a Mount Rushmore, a hypothetical Mount Rushmore for WVU. It's about what you did at WVU. And elsewhere can help you. It's did with Jerry West, did with Hot Rod Hudley, does with Huggins, even if I could put him there. But it shouldn't be the end-all, be-all. That shouldn't be the reason why you're there if somebody else is better than you in college. So I go to Sean Butler over Javon Carter. And some of you are putting in Butler and Carter there. Okay, I can hear that argument kind of. John Carter is now with the Phoenix Suns, originally with Memphis, drafted by the Grizzlies. He's had the better pro career than Butler. He didn't go to a Final Four like Javon Butler did, which is why I would go for him on that Mount Rushmore list. But he was a star player at WVU for multiple years. He was a great player under Huggins. He was a player that was known across college basketball and eventually got drafted in the NBA. That's kind of what you want for a Mount Rushmore of a college program, especially with some history. You want to have a player drafted. So Javon Carter said the better pro career was drafted, etc. I get it. But Sean Butler led that, led that team to the Final Four. So I have to cling on that. And if you want to go Butler and Javon Carter with Jerry Rest and Hot Rod Hudley, okay. I'm not going to be too mad about it. But I want to make this clear. I'm in my early 30s. Okay, I'm not in my early 20s. I'm not in my mid or even late 20s. Unfortunately, I'm in my early 30s. I got a three in front of the number for my recent birthday. And I graduated from WU as an alum in 2010, my full disclosure. So I was leaving. Final four year was one of the greatest years you could imagine for the program history for how historic that even an appearance even is. It's almost like a national championship equivalent for how difficult it is to even get to a Final Four in college basketball throughout March Madness. That was a special year. So again, that's why you got to have Butler there. you got to have some figure from that team there if you can't have Huggins. But before that, and when I was starting my college career, there was also some success that was special. And it was rejuvenating a college program, a college basketball program, the same time Pat White and Steve Slayton were doing it for the football program and getting major bowl wins and national title contention and top five rankings and BCS bowl victories. It was all about New Year's Day for WVU football. Same time, it was Elite Eight for WVU basketball. It was a Sweet 16 for WVU basketball. And this is before the 2010 Final Four. This is 2005, 2006. This is early college for me. This is a half decade prior. This is now 15 years ago. So many of these current students probably don't even remember that, and they were very, very young at that time. But that was under John Beeline. That was a different system than what Huggins has now. And Beeline's moved on and went to championship games and been a runner-up in the NCAA tournament with Michigan. But that was building the WU program up to then be where Huggins took it. Huggins, Huggins took it to another level. But Beeline took it to a level that was necessary before getting it to where Huggins took it. And that team was led by Kevin Pitsnoggle. That team was led by the trailer park sensation. He was a guy in a trailer park that had a bunch of kids, very stereotypical West Virginia, with a name that sounded very similar to their rival in the city of Pittsburgh. And here, the outlet that I'm with, Pittsburgh Media, Pittsburgh Sports Live, under the Pittsburgh Sports Now umbrella, Kevin Pitsnoggle. He was a weird center body. He was very, very tall and lanky. It was almost like Yao Ming, but kind of a, 
I don't want to call him a redneck, but a redneck hick Yao Ming, and I don't mean that derogatory. That was kind of what he is. He would admit that. So he was a West Virginia, stereotypical West Virginian, kind of with a Yao Ming body, let me a little bit more muscular. But unlike Yao, chucking threes. Okay, it was live or die by the three-pointer. Outside three-pointer is where he lived, and he would drill those three-pointers. It, it would make you worry. It would make you wipe sweat off your brow. But he was like a Dirk Nowinski before Dirk, or actually during Dirk's career, but before Dirk really got going to, a, to an NBA success and became an MVP and, and a Hall of Famer. Where he could be that big body to dominate you in the paint, but also he would want it kicked outside to him, and he would hit those threes outside. And he led a WU team to an Elite Eight. He led a WU team to a Sweet 16. He had multiple years of success in playoff runs for WVU, for West Virginia basketball that wasn't doing it for the prior decade before him, that needed rejuvenated to that level to get to where Huggins took it to a Final Four and now where it is, in which it's an elite program. And he didn't do it under he didn't do it under Bob Huggins, but he did it under another Hall of Fame coach in college basketball history. John Beeline is going to probably be there as well with all the wins he has with the Final Fours, with close to winning a national title with Michigan and the NIT title with West Virginia and the Elite Eight, the Sweet Sixteen, as I mentioned. And he was the star player. He was one of the best in college basketball. He was known in college basketball at that time. There's no NBA success, unfortunately. There's no Deshaun Butler or Javon Carter level success. Certainly not Hot Rod Hudley or Jerry West in terms of NBA success. There was some pro success. Played for a Pittsburgh pro team. Not really much pro success. Kind of never heard of him. He hasn't even come back much to the program. There's not much celebration about him. He gets forgotten a lot to the history of not only college basketball, but even West Virginia University history, even WVU basketball. But yet he deserves to be there. Because you want to represent him out Rushmore with not just everybody who played in the last few years, not everybody that you have seen. You want to recognize the history of the program when there is success, and there has been. When you're doing a Mount Rushmore, you want to have somebody like a Jerry West, who is the staple of basketball and known worldwide for basketball, whether it be college, pro, or whatever. One of the greatest basketball figures of all time. Led your team to a Final Four, you got to be there. Greatest Mountaineer of all time. And that might be across all sports. Hyrule Hudley has to be there. His pro career was cut short with an injury, but his college career was not a great college career and still became a great basketball figure as a broadcaster. And Deshaun Butler, the best player on a recent Final Four team, one of your two Final Four teams in program history, had some pro appearances and was a great player in college basketball, which is what it's all about. So you've got to have him. And you can go with Javon Carter because he's an NBA player and he's playing well in the NBA. And maybe he's going to have a better NBA career than anyone else since Jerry West, really. It's possible. But I want to have some representation of the full eras. you got to represent the best of Mountaineer, of Mountaineer basketball. you got to represent the recency of Mountaineer basketball and that recent success. But there also was another time of success that was before Bob Huggins, that was before Deshaun Butler, that was before Javon Carter, before Miles McBride right now, who I detailed in a past show and why he's the current team MVP for WVU. Go through Pittsburgh Sports Live and WVU Sports Now for that one. Go to WV, WV Sports Now and search Mike Drop and you'll find that show. And who knows where his future will be? Who knows what he'll do in the next few years with the Mountaineers? If he leads into another Final Four, if they happen to win a national title, get Huggins that ring. If he stays there for a few years, like I think he should, maybe he'll join this list. There's room. But right now, Culver 2, right now, for the Mount, Mount, Mount Rushmore OWU of the men's program, Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, clearly got to be there. Deshaun Butler got to be there as well. I feel like everyone kind of agrees with that. And you could go Javon Carter, and I wouldn't be mad. But Kevin Pistemago needs some dap. He's getting disrespected. He's not getting enough love. And it's because you're forgetting. And if you, by putting him there, by putting him there, this is the reason why I want to have him there, you represent more of a totality of history for the WU program. 
So for my money, Kevin Pistonga deserves to be on that list. Kevin Pistonga was getting disrespected by the results of this list so far. And I would go Jerry Rest, Hot Rod Hardly, Deshaun Butler, and I would put Kevin Pistonga on that list for greater success as a Mountaineer, more important success as a Mountaineer, and giving some dap to a guy who's been mostly forgotten to WVU history and college basketball history, and that's kind of an injustice and unfair. But you do what you want. Because, again, that's what's kind of fun of all-time list, great of all-time list. We're never going to really know. There's nothing that's definitive. This isn't in stone. I'm not going to put this anywhere, or at least I don't think. It's hypothetical. But here you go. Here's a little, here's a little rules. This is kind of what they put out there on what you're supposed to follow. And I think I'm following it more than you guys. But, you know, again, I brush my shoulders off. Mount Rushmore of West Virginia basketball. Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. That's where it is. You know, in general, we'll see where they would hypothetically say it would be in West Virginia, but Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. Only America's most distinguished presidents have reached this pinnacle of leadership. This honor represents a level of achievement and success only experienced by few. Just as these presidents surpassed their peers and embodied success, so have four players, whose legacies have forever entrenched them in West Virginia basketball greatness. Let's get it started. And... Go there. Go to follow WVU basketball on Twitter at WVU Hoops. Find the link. You can also find it on any of the WVU major outlet websites there, WVUsports.com, I believe it is. These are my four Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, Kevin Pitsnoggle, to not disrespect a recent level of success. And in terms of one of the better Mountaineers, he is absolutely one of them. And Deshaun Butler for the being the best player on a, on the last and the most recent and only one of two Final Four teams. That makes sense to me. You can go Javon Carter. I see it. I even see Gansey getting some votes. Huggins should be there for going beyond a player. But since we're not, Kevin Pissnoggle deserves it. He does. Don't forget about history that's actually not that old. It's even within the last two decades, even though you like to keep the memory of only the last few years alive. But regardless, Kevin Pissnoggle deserves it for me. So I would go Jerry West, Hot Rod Hudley, Deshaun Butler, and Kevin Pissnoggle instead of Javon Carter. That's going to do it for this one, and that was kind of a fun one. Nothing to really get too mad about, but again, I'm telling you that I was right and you were wrong, or at least I'll say that uh, in jest. <laughs> Nonetheless, hit us up, WV Sports Now on Twitter, and WVSportsNow.com, newest member of the, Mount of the Now family, the Mountaineer coverage, as well as all of West Virginia and beyond. Pittsburgh Sports Now, Pittsburgh Hockey Now, SteelersNow.com. You can also find us at PGHSportsLive.com, where all these shows can be archived for all eternity. Also find us on social. There it is, Pittsburgh Sports Live on YouTube. And this is my favorite. My favorite graphic there is that kind of separates and comes together. It's kind of magical and also the most important one. Helps us keep the lights on here, helps the sponsors, helps us do this for you and helps you guys get instant notification when we upload anything, whether it be post-game shows, whether it be interviews with players or coaches, shows like this, live chats, whatever, anything on the channel. You get instant notification if you click on the subscribe button right below the video, make it easier for us to get the content to you. And also WVSportsNow.com, SteelersNow.com as well. Find us on Twitter at WVSportsNow, at PGH Sports Live on Twitter as well as Pittsburgh Sports Live on Facebook and WV Sports Now on Facebook. And again, go vote. Go ahead and vote. Again, I'm just asking you to think about Kevin Pistongo a little bit when you're voting. I think he's being forgotten a little bit. I think he deserves more dap. Think about Penn Kevin Pistongo a little bit. Everyone's going Jerry West, Howard Hudley, and they deserve it. I'd love Huggins to be there, but we're only doing players. Deshaun Butler I get, Javon Carter I get, but I, I just think about Kevin Pistongo a little bit, okay? Think about Kevin Pistongo a little bit. I don't, he's not getting enough love. He's getting a little disrespected for what he's done as a Mountaineer. 